Do y'all think that if the call was made to Mary Wilson, and when he said, look, get rid of Jean Terrell, and Mary would have been like, okay, let's get rid of Jean. We don't really know that bitch anyway. And you'll find out that Jean ain't have no forms of loyalty to the Supremes, okay? That's why I said, Mary girl, not now. Not now. It ain't time for you to stand up. Not now. Now for that bitch. Hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky will be our animal print turban and our Leona wood bangles. If not already a part of our book club, please remember to hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube. And for a small monthly fee of $5, you babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's continue talking about Caller Miss Ross, the unauthorized biography of Diana Ross by uh, JT. That works better, because I can't keep doing a terrible lele. Really? As soon as Barry Gordy finally separated Diana Ross from the Supremes, most people assumed that this would be the ideal time for the two of them to wed. Diana seemed to think so herself after the group's final show and shared this belief with more than a few of those inside the Motown circle. If Barry had married Diana while she was still a member of the group, it would have caused even more complications. There would have been no way she could have continued a working relationship with Mary, Cindy, and especially with Florence. You know who else was like this? Um, I want to say, who was it? Escape? Because remember, Candy was hunching Jermaine Dupree, okay? And in TLC, Chili was hunching Dallas Austin. Okay, so again, I don't understand why people are so mad at Diana Ross for doing what every other group has done. I didn't know that Candy Girl was hunting Jermaine Dupree. Did y'all know that? Not my Candy Girl, but Candy Burst. I want to have a family and be able to grow up with my kids, but I have to come right out and tell you that the whole marriage thing is going right out of the window, she despaired in a 1970 interview. I know that I can't have children without getting married, even though it's getting to be very popular. It's just not the kind of thing for me, and it wouldn't make my mother happy. Parenting okay. during the 50s and 60s and 70s era. No, you got to marry this ninja, okay? You can't be around here, you know, shaming our name because you want to have children outside of, a wed outside of wedlock. That was a big deal back then. Diana yeah. wanted to get married, and she wanted a baby, said Cindy Birdsong, who married in May 1970. This, I think, was the one frustration in her life. We sometimes talk about how many children we'd have, how wonderful it would be to have a family. That part of her was important, and it was missing. She had everything she wanted, power, fame, money, but not a child. And I do think she was determined to have one. In the early 1970, Diana and Barry continued to argue constantly about the terms of what had become a tug of war in their relationship. After the Motown contingent returned home from the Las Vegas farewell, Barry still had the problem of dealing with Mary Wilson and Cindy Birdsong. 
Wilson and Birdsong really had already served Gordy's purpose as background scenery for Diana. Although it may appear as though he had exploited them, they nonetheless had made a good living and achieved a fair amount of fame in the process. Now they were irritations to him, a man not much interested in sentiment. If the two of them had simply accepted his choice of Sarita as Diana's replacement, there probably wouldn't have been any further discussion among them. What do y'all think? Do y'all think that if, you know, the call was made to Mary Wilson and when he said, look, get rid of Jean Terrell, you know, and Mary would have been like, okay, let's get rid of Jean. We don't really know that bitch anyway. And you'll find out that Jean ain't have no forms of loyalty to the Supremes, okay? That's why I said, Mary girl, not now. Not now. It ain't time for you to stand up. Not now. Now for that bitch. It speaks volumes to me that he went to Mary because he didn't have to. You know what I'm saying? He could have just been like, uh, Gene, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah, don't come back here tomorrow. But instead, Wilson and Birdsong challenged Gordy's authority, and in doing so, they dragged him into a bitter battle over something he really didn't care about anyway. Exactly. He don't care about you. He don't care about you, girl. All he care about is Diana. Very but he did make a lot of mistakes. He really did. You know, things that he truly paid for. Okay, when Diana left him, Later on, after he spent all that money on that lady to put her at the elevation that she was at, I mean, goddamn, you know, I mean, he, I think Barry Gordy got his just due in the long run. Surprisingly, up the ladder to the roof, the Supreme's first recording with Terrell in the lead was a hit even without Barry's support. He hadn't counted on the public's overwhelmingly curiosity about the new group. Also, their appearance on the Ed Sullivan Show helped record sales. It sold a little over 800,000 copies. Shit, that's good for now. You got artists, artists out here selling like 13 copies. The first order of business for Ross' new career was the selection of that all-important debut solo single. When she recorded Reach Out and Touch Somebody's Hand, written and produced by Nicholas Ashford and Valerie Simpson, she decided it should be her first release. Let me tell you something, okay? If Nicholas, Nick Ashford, Shasta La Vista, I love him. Solid as a rock, I love them. Okay, on the street corner. Let me tell you I, something. After that song right there, then people ain't had to work again, ever. You hear me? If people ain't always singing, reach out and touch somebody's hand for something, I don't know what the ninjas is doing. When I tell you Ashford and Simpson could sit back on their ass, Valerie Simpson is still alive. Valerie Simpson and her daughter is sitting back like a fat rat in the cheese factory off of that song. You heard Diana me. claimed that the song spoke to the prevailing drug problem among America's youth in Bruce's project. So what ended up happening was Bird Gordy wanted to uh, keep Diana grounded. And what he did was to arrange a visit to the Brewster project for her and him. At first, Diana didn't want to go, but once she was there, she was struck by how run down the area now seemed and how prevalent the drug problem had become among the Brewster Project's youth. There is a generous benevolent side of Diana Ross that many people do not know about because it is such a contrast to that other side of her for which she, she's better known. Perhaps one of the reasons Diana Ross is so suspicious of people today is that she has often been taken advantage of when she extended herself. I feel that there are people that you know, I should stay away from, you know, but I want to believe in the goodness of this universe. You know what I'm saying? It's real hard for me to believe that there are demons walking among us, you know, even though I have had situations where, you know, I even laid down with a demon or two before. What happened was she was out doing her Diana Ross thing and she came across this young woman, okay? The young woman had explained to Diana her story in life, right? Diana was so moved by this story that she had the young woman to um, call her 
She actually gave the woman her home phone number, okay? Now, next minute, you know, the woman is calling Diana Ross whenever, okay? Diana Ross is being very supportive of her, encouraging her. You know, the conversations are being um, wound down now, but the caller, the young woman who is in distress, talks about, you know, I can't make it. You know, I feel like harming myself. Therefore, extending the conversation. What Diana Ross did not know was that the woman, the young lady, who she was trying to encourage was recording her the entire time. Then to make matters worse, she copied the tape and distributed it among her friends. Imagine how manipulated Diana Ross might have felt if she ever learned of this betrayal. The tape still circulating among Diana's fans. Don't make yourself too available to them, Barry always warned her about her following. It'll backfire on Diana's first solo dates were difficult experiences. The $100,000 nightclub at Gordy ordered overwhelmed her and the audience response was very cool. The audience is waiting for her to fail. Okay, the same thing when um, any member leaves a group. You know, you're waiting for them to fail, just like how we felt with Bobby the Brown, uh, Beyonce, Diana Ross. Who else left the group and we was like, they ain't gonna make it, they ain't gonna do, they gonna be bad. You know, and it ended up being good. You know, especially Bobby Brown to me is like the biggest example because nobody thought that Bobby Brown was gonna, you know, hit the way he hit and he did. You know what I'm saying? Michael Jackson, uh, I don't know. We knew he was a little star, even, you know, young back then, you know, because remember in the last video, we found out that they was teaching his ass how to lie at 11, okay? So if they teaching him how to lie at 11, imagine the type of lies that he was saying at 40. But the people were coming to see her with a bad attitude. Her opening act, ventriloquist Willie Tyler, remembered it was as if she had gotten, gotten a bad reputation just by leaving the Supremes, her partners behind. He told her to take her time and wait it out. Soon he said the audience will come to her side. When Diana brought her new show to the Frontier Hotel in Las Vegas for the first time, the advance reservation was very few for the opening night. I cannot believe this. Like to think about Diana Ross <laughs> at this place is like baffling to me, right? But Bertie Gordy said he literally had to go outside, tear 20 in half and be like, okay, you'll get the other piece of the 20 um, after you come out because he was out front telling people, look, go on the inside, Diana Ross is about to perform, okay? He could not allow his star to uh, believe that she was not at a good place, okay? Like I said, Jay-Z and Birdie Gordy got a lot of things in common, okay? And tricking a bitch is one of them. So it did work. That night, there was a full house, even though Birdie Gordy had to pay for it. As Diana's solo career was getting underway, Motown's promotional efforts made sure she was a topic of public discussion. Since she was single and beautiful, there was always a lot of media speculation as to whether or not she would marry and have children. Diana had said that she desperately wanted a child, and Barry Gordy certainly seemed to outsiders the most logical candidate as the father. But Barry was not interested in marrying Diana. In his mind, he would say later, there was no question about that. He loved her. No one doubted that. Loving Diana was easy, but living with her would not be. Though Barry might not have been interested in formally committing himself to her, he was still vitally concerned about her career. A child out of wedlock could ruin her. Many of Diana's peers would go on to have children without marrying, including Barry the Gordy. Barry the Gordy. That, that out my stomach would feel like, ugh, like sick, like, ugh, you dirty bitch, you. You dirty, ooh, you know I want to marry you over here. In 1966, ooh. a 22-year-old Diana had said, I want the biggest wedding of all. I want what every young girl wants to have, 
a big fabulous wedding to wear a lovely white wedding gown with a long endlessly long train to see my mother and father all dressed up and my husband waiting for me down the aisle in a tuxedo that's my dream and then a romantic honeymoon afterwards far far away but five years later there was no prince charming in sight Diana Ross, 26 years old, had married Robert Silberstein in Las Vegas on January 20th, 1971. As soon as the news services picked up the story, the Motown phones wouldn't stop ringing. The New York office refused to confirm that a wedding had taken place at all, and the Los Angeles offices referred all the calls to New York. The runaround, as one former Motown employee explained it, everybody wanted to know, who is Robert Silverstein? Like already done so please remember to like share the facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com now remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies have a good one Ooh, what a little moonlight can do